All right, one class to go. We're out of here. Yay. Yay. Okay, cool. There's no what? Oh, my God. Oh, that's not. Take off your invisibility cloak. Um, you heard from uh, Jack. Is he going to be here? He should be. Well, you guys all get the gold star for figuring out by the last period of the day when to show up. There we go. We have quorum. Uh, everyone's here. Any questions on the homework? No. Uh, yes. No. Um, I have a question on the homework. Is sure. it okay to put P, B, C instead of proof by contradiction? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah okay. Just put, That's my question. Just put a, um, a period so you know it's an acronym or a, it's an abbreviation. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm just going to call out uh, one through five. The rest are proofs. I'm going to need to read your proofs. Uh, number one, uh, assume temporarily that B, uh, measure of angle B is not equal to 40. Number two, assume temporarily that uh, segment DE is congruent to segment RS. Number three, assume temporarily that A minus B is equal to zero. Assume temporarily that X is equal to Y for four. And number five, assume temporarily that uh, line EF is parallel to line GH. And the rest are all proofs. I'll just say they were pretty straightforward. I don't think you should have been uh, tripped up by, by them, but uh, I will look at your proofs. Any questions? Okay. Um, there is a quiz ready to go. I don't know if any of you took it. Uh, it's a pretty quick test. There's two pages to it. It's just basically two questions, but multiple parts. Make sure you take that at some point. Um, if you don't have it done by Sunday, I will put zeros in the grade book, but Sunday is when I'll put it in the grade book. Uh, I'll probably look at it before that if you have it turned in. Uh, homework tonight, one through 17, all oh, six, or we finally get back to inequalities today. All right, we got a bunch of uh, theorems today. Three theorems and two corollaries, I think. Yeah, three theorems and two corollaries. So a bunch of stuff to put in your book of truth. I will say this, we will end on one slide that uh, summarizes everything today and the knowledge that you will need to do well in this chapter and in this section. So you might want to copy down the last slide as well. All right, we're back to inequalities uh, and just triangles today. So six, two through six, four and two corollaries. So here's the setup the entire day. We're just simply gonna be talking about a, just a generic triangle, uh, TRS or SRT uh, or RST. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything what it is, whether it's isosceles or right triangle, acute, obtuse, it's just a triangle, that's the point. We're gonna jump right into it and do a proof. So here's what I'm basically trying to prove to you. I'm trying to prove that if you're told that on any given triangle, that one side is bigger than the other side, so we're talking about two sides, so if one side is bigger than another side, that the angle opposite the larger side is bigger than the angle opposite the smaller side. Um, and that's what this basically says. So if I tell you that RT is bigger than RS, then the side opposite the large side, S, is supposed to be bigger than the angle, did I say side, I meant angle, than the angle that is opposite the smaller side. So we're trying to show that uh, angle S is bigger than, or bigger than angle T because the side opposite S is the large side and the side opposite angle T is the small side. Okay, that's our proof. Now I promise you, uh, eventually we're gonna see a proof by contradiction uh, and a, um, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, it was proof by contradiction. That's what I promised you. Okay, a couple of those today. All right, so <clears throat> this one's a, um, somewhat of a challenging proof. I'm not sure if I could have come up with this myself. The logic is pretty straightforward once you see it. So here's the logic. So it says you, it wants you to construct point Z somewhere on TR such that the, uh, the length of RS 
uh, is equal to the length of RZ. So maybe I should just draw it and point this out to you. So the length of RZ and RS are equal. So I measure RS, I walk down on RT until I get to that distance, put a dot, and then connect S to Z. Now, why am I allowed to do that? Well, remember, we start off by saying that RT is bigger than RS. So clearly there is a point somewhere along this that would equal the distance of RS. Play, connect the dots. Okay. Uh, by the way, what kind of triangle did I just make? Isosceles. Absolutely, positively, because we constructed it so that RS and RZ were exactly the same distance. Okay, so we got an isosceles triangle. I went ahead and marked the congruency. Um, all right, here's the next nifty thing that they're going to do. Um, they're going to label these specific angles, and this is going to get. This is a pretty good proof. Uh, but make sure you stop me if you don't see the logic of every single step. So the first thing they're going to do is just talk about angle S. Uh, I'm sorry, angles uh, one and two. And they're going to say that uh, one is equal to two. Clearly, that's true because. It's my uh, isosceles trapezoid theorem. There, there you go. Uh, the next thing they're going to do is talk yeah, about uh, uh, angle S. And they're simply going to say S is constructed from one and three. Well, yeah, uh, absolutely. That's the angle addition postulate. <clears throat> okay, so now let's look at our proof. Our proof is an inequality. So we've got equality, 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 equality. We've we got to get an inequality here somewhere. So what they're going to do is they're going to take this statement right here that S is equal to 1 plus 3. They're going to apply that. I don't know if it was the fourth or the fifth inequality property that said if the left side equals the right side and the right side is made up of two or more things, then the left side is bigger than either the first thing or the second thing. So I forget which property that was. I think it was, it's one of the inequality properties. Uh, and, and remember the example I gave you, if I just plug in numbers here, four is equal to one plus three. So therefore four is bigger than one and four is bigger than three as well. So all I did was choose one. Uh, I chose it specifically. You'll see here in a second why I chose one. All right, so this is just a, one of those properties of inequalities. Everybody good so far? Yep. Okay. All right, so the next thing they're gonna claim is they're gonna say that angle S is bigger than two. They're just doing a substitution. We, we established that one was equal to two, so they just changed this one to a two. Uh, and then they're gonna make one more statement. They're gonna talk about uh, angle uh, two here, which is an external uh, angle of the little triangle right here. They're gonna say two is uh, uh, equal to T plus three. And that's just the external angle theorem of triangle. We okay? All right, now they're gonna do that same trick that we did here in this step right here. They're gonna say, because the left side is equal to the right side, that the left side is bigger than either one of these. And they are going to, well, if you notice the proof here has a T on the right side, they're gonna choose the T. And now we got half of what we need. We just need to change this two to an S and, and we're done. So how do we change that two to an S? We can add the two inequalities. We might, sure. But if you notice what this line says right here, this says that a, a measure of angle S is bigger than the measure of angle two, and the measure of angle two is bigger than the angle. Uh, so measure we can of just do like a transitive kind of thing. So we just do a transitive one. So if S is bigger than two and two is bigger than T, then S has to be bigger than T, and QED were done. So that was a pretty slick proof. I wish I could think like that. Um, uh, so taking a step back, what did we just prove? Well, once again, if you're given that one side of a triangle is bigger than the other side, then the angle opposite the big side is bigger than the angle opposite the small side. And this is uh, theorem 6-2. So th theorem 6-2 says uh, if one side of a triangle is longer than the second side, then the angle opposite the first side is larger than the angle opposite the second side. And that kind of makes sense. If you think about an angle on a triangle, the larger it opens up, the longer the side opposite it becomes. So if you find the biggest angle, right, the side opposite, it's got to be the biggest side. So then can we say the converse? That's the next thing we do. We've got to prove it, though.
Wouldn't we just prove it the exact same way, though? Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I mean, the book doesn't do it that way, and I'm going to do it the way the book showed you. Um, you can explore that on your own. And I probably not because we're going to be starting with the opposite, not that one side is bigger, but that two angles are bigger. Couldn't you just like draw a line through S so that angle, that one of part of angle S is as big as T, and then you can make that an isosceles trapezoid? That sounds like a possibility. Triangle, sorry. Yeah, that sounds like a possibility. I'm going to do it uh, by uh, proof by contradiction just to show you an example of a proof by contradiction. And by proof by contradiction, you're going to see how quickly and easily it's done. But I don't know, your idea of, yeah, let's, if angle T is the biggest one, or angle S is the biggest one, uh, let's make angle S equal to angle T and let's see what happens. Maybe that will work. Okay, so the converse is what we're going to prove. Um, you have not seen this before. This is called, this is not a different type of proof necessarily. Uh, it's just a, it's a regular uh, proof, but it's called proof by cases. And you'll see why here in a second. So we're going to try to prove the converse. So we start off by, well, it tells us one of the angles is bigger than the other one. And we're going to try to prove that the side opposite the big angle is bigger than the side opposite the small one. All right. So we're going to do this by uh, proof by contradiction. So notice proof by contradiction, what would be my statement? Um, you would claim that um, uh, line, R, line RT is less than line RS. Do you guys or agree? No. What would we say? Oh, you would just say than. RT is not bigger than RS. Right, so that would be the statement. So we're going to say it is not bigger than RS because there's actually been how many possibilities if R oh. is not greater than RS? How many possibilities? If it's not, if it's not greater than RS, would it, it would either be equal to or less than. And this is why this is called a proof by cases because there ends up being two cases that we got to prove. We got to consider that they could possibly be equal and then we got to consider the possibility that one might be smaller. So this is why this is called proof by cases. So wouldn't it be easier just to say it's less than and then, pro and then proof by contradiction to see if it's equal to? Well, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Then, right. why, then my thing would be the same. I, yeah, but okay. So you could, you, if you want to say less than, then you just got to remember, then you got to do it for equal as well, too. As long as you do that, you're fine. Um, all right. So let me show you how quickly this one is done. So case number one, we're going to assume that RT equals RS, right? Why is that faulty logic? Why is RT not equal to RS? By the way, we've already reached a contradiction here. Uh, theorem 6-2. What's it say? Go ahead, McKinley. Keep going. Um, it says if one side of a triangle is longer than a second side, then the then the long opposite angle opposite the first side is larger than the angle opposite the second side. So why does that prove that this has to be false? Then? Because our okay. S is bigger than T. Or is, yeah. Okay. You're, you're, you're dancing around it and you're really close. So here's the, the logic. Um, if RT is equal to RS, then it's a, uh, it's an isosceles triangle, therefore angle T would equal angle S. And that contradicts what we're, we're given in the given that S is bigger than T. So if you immediately claim that RT is equal to RS, that can't work, that would make it an isosceles triangle and T would be equal to S or angle T would be equal to angle S and that contradicts what we're given in the given. So that, that's, that's immediately false, right? Um, okay, so case number one is dead. If we can prove that case number two is dead, then we've proven that RT is bigger than RS. So case number two is that RT is smaller than S, right? All right, uh, why is that wrong? Hint, hint, think of what McKinley just said. Because of theorem 6-2. Okay, so to tell me why. Uh, because S would angle S would have to be smaller. There you than go. So if RT is the largest side, I'm sorry, if, if RS is the largest side, that's what it says right here, RS is bigger than RT, 
By theorem 6-2, then angle T would have to be bigger than, bigger than S, and that contradicts the statement right here. And that's a pretty easy thing to do. And we just contradicted both possibilities that RT is either equal or that RT is smaller. Well, there's only other one option, therefore RT has to be bigger, and we're done. All of our assumptions that we made ended up being false. We arrived at some contradiction. So here's an example of uh, where proof by contradiction, I mean, it wasn't that challenging of a proof because we did it by proof by contradiction. Okay, so we just proved the uh, QED. We just proved the, uh, the converse. So this is a biconditional statement. So if uh, you take, uh, and remember for an equilateral triangle, um, you know, this doesn't apply to it because we don't have unequal sides. But for any other than an equilateral triangle, you're always going to have one big side and at least one smaller side. Isosceles would have one big, one small, or maybe two big and one small, or two small and one big. So for all those triangles except for equilateral, uh, then the angle opposite the largest side is the biggest angle, or the side opposite the biggest angle is the biggest side. It turns out that's going to be kind of useful for us later on. So that's two down, one more theorem to go, and two more corollaries. Oh, McKinley, your brother is doing the geometry that we're doing, that we've done a couple chapters ago. If you're curious, you want to give him a hand. Why would I want to do that? Well, yeah, I'm, why would you? He asked me a question this morning that you could have answered and, and helped him out. And I almost was tempted to say, ask your brother, but I didn't. I gave him the answer. I think we also have a, a, a meeting. Um, uh, I think we have a meeting the same time you have Zoom with that class because my sister's, I think, in the same class. Uh, Eleanor? No, she's not in that class. Oh, really? Okay, never mind. She's in my uh, fourth period class. It's close. It's class right after it. Okay, right, everybody good? Then, yeah. You got this written down? Yes. Yes. All right. So uh, two quick corollaries. Uh, we're not going to prove these. Uh, I'll just say the, we're not going to prove either one of them because they're very easily proven and we've proven something very similar to it before. Um, so corollary one says this, if you have a point uh, and you want to measure the distance from the point to the line, it's a perpendicular segment. Now we had one where we had, remember, two parallel lines and the distance between them is a perpendicular, and it's, the proof is done the same way. Um, but they, did, they basically throw this statement out. This is that classic saying in, in everyday English that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Um, and in our case, it's going to be a perpendicular line. Oh, yeah, okay, so. So the perpendicular segment from a point to a line yes. okay, is so that's, the shortest I think segment. Except for Carol the shortest segment. What's this corollary to? Theorem 6-2 or theorem 6-3? Six, 6-3. Three? Six, three. All right. I can't believe Ms. Boyd actually said yes. We're doing it together. Wow. Okay, we good? All right. Uh, corollary two, uh, it's basically the same idea, except instead of going from a point to a line, we go a point to a plane. So if you drop a perpendicular down from the point to the plane or to the surface of the plane, that is the shortest distance from that point to the plane. So it, it's really the same thing. But how is this easily proven from like theorem 6-2? Well, remember, but, like, how is this linked six, to six, two? six three? Remember, six three uh, talks about angles 
and it talks about, uh, I'll go ahead and show you real quick. It talks about angles and it talks about uh, side distances. So if I draw to another point right here, and then I connect these two points right there, right? This saying, this is the shortest, shortest distance, right? Notice no matter how I draw from this point to here, since this is your 90 degree angle right here, this will always be the longest side of the triangle. We, we don't need to consider this one because this side right here doesn't measure the distance between this point. So no matter how I draw this right triangle over and over and over again, because this side is opposite the 90 degree angle, that's the biggest angle on the triangle. Therefore, that uh, this leg right here will always be shorter than the hypotenuse. Make sense? Yeah. And can't you also say that that's just the, uh, uh, a isosceles triangle because of you could say that since the exterior angle is equal to the two triangle. then i mean i can make it into it but like i said I, i'm not really concerned about the distance um i'm not really concerned about the the uh the distance right here another way of proving this and this is the way we prove the other one is that if we draw a line through that point parallel to the plane, then we can call out that one theorem that said the shortest distance between two parallel lines is a perpendicular. There's another way. But the reason why they call this, and it's a good question, why they call this a corollary to 6-3 was because of what I just showed you right there. I, I'm personally claiming, I'm not sure why they even needed to call this one out because of the, the previous one that we had. But I didn't write the book. Okay. Moving on. So think about this. This is a really, 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 really important. Make sure you, you, you tell me if you don't understand what I'm trying to show you here. So let's say I had three segments there, three segments. Well, I got a long one. The, the black one is the longest one. And I've got two shorter ones. In fact, when you put the two shorter ones together, they're still together. Their summation of the two is still shorter than the long one. So if I were to place the black one there and on the black one, I were to place the red one and the blue one, you would see that, I mean, the two don't add up to the longest one. So the question is this, taking uh, segments of this length, can you make a triangle? Yeah, you can make a triangle out of any three sides. No, it turns out that's not true. Right. And if we as long as we define uh, that we must connect the segments at their end points. So, for instance, if I connect these segments at their end points, I'll raise the blue one. I'll raise the red one. And I think you can see that there's just no way that the red and the blue would ever touch each other. Right. So you don't get a triangle when yeah, the, they have to they have to add up to more than the hypotenuse. Well, I'm not making a right triangle. Right. I'm just making any triangle. Okay. Uh, so, so that doesn't ever, so if the two, two sides together are smaller than the third side, you don't ever get a triangle. Now, if you don't connect them at their end points, obviously you can make a triangle. But if you, if you're, if you're required to connect them at their end points, you don't get a triangle. Well, what, what would happen if the, the two sides were equal to the, the third side? You, you still can't make it. That? You still can't make a triangle. Still yeah, can't make a triangle there. For those that can't visualize it, I'll place them back here. If you raise the red one and blue one again, notice, and I didn't make these perfectly the right length, uh, they never will touch each other. So you, and if you can think about your two hands uh, touching each other, if you raise them up, they, they separate. Or think about a, um, you guys know what um, a bridge, a drawbridge is? Yeah. yeah so this it's is a bridge the ancient used to move bridges. <laughs> No, uh, we're talking about a bridge that opens up so boats can go underneath of it. Yeah, uh, but those boats could have bridges on it. All boats have bridges. That's where the captain stays. It's literally called the bridge. So uh, therefore, anyway, McKinley is right. Yeah, I'm right. Apparently he is. All right, plus one for McKinley. Wait, what did we say? It, ben is slithering. Allie and Anna are Hufflepuff, and so that makes... It's Slytherin, not Slytherin. Yeah. But no, Ben, you are Slytherin too, so. I forget, McKinley, were you Ravenclaw? Was that it? Yes. All right. And then Jack is Gryffindor. I'm All Gryffindor. Right. One point for, for Ravenclaw. All right. So, obviously, the next statement I'm going to make is what? If, if they're longer, then they can connect it to it to make a triangle. Right. So if, notice, they're, if added together, they're longer. Notice neither one of them is longer than the longest one, but their combined distances, right? If you, if you place them, they would overlap each other. 
And so clearly when you raise them, those could make a, a triangle. All right, so that's <laughs> basically what I'm trying to show you is that if you want to make a triangle out of three segments, you got to add two and it's got to be bigger than the third one, right? And more importantly, the two shorter ones added together must be bigger than the third. But we could generalize this. Notice if we add black and red, well, that's going to be bigger than blue. If we add black and blue, that's going to be bigger than red. If we add red and blue, that's going to be bigger for, than black. So we could generalize this. So all of them work. Simply say, if you add two uh, uh, sides together, it's got to be bigger than the third side, right? Uh, by the way. But then you, at the uh, beginning, black plus red was bigger than blue. So why didn't that work then? Well, let's go back to that one then. So black plus blue worked fine for black plus blue, but blue plus red wasn't bigger than black. So it's got to work for any combination there. So that's oh, why okay. this one didn't work. All right. Now, do you guys accept this as a proof? Does that seem rigorous yeah. enough for you? Yeah. Yeah, that seems. Oh, good Lord, no. I just could have, I could have lied to you. I could have made them use PowerPoint to make them look this way. Well, you haven't been proving anything until now. So, I mean, we're used to that. I know. Uh, so I'm just going to claim that this really isn't a proof, but it's a visual representation of, of what I'm talking about. So we do have to prove this. So let's, it doesn't take too long to prove it. So we'll prove it. So once again, we got our classic triangle right here. I'm not claiming it's any specific kind of triangle. Uh, it's just a triangle ABC. So I need to prove that any two sides add together are bigger than the third side. Okay. All right. So that's my start. Uh, ends up being, this is a really nice proof. Uh, pretty simply done. All right, so here's the logic. Uh, which side is the longest? Uh, AC. Okay, well, do we know that for sure from the given no. that AC is the largest? No. So here's what I'm going to say. Um, I could have given you this proof without this picture, but right? I still want to give you a picture. Um, one of the sides is the longest. I'm just going to, if, if AB is not the longest, I'm going to arrange the, 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 the naming protocol, A, B, and C, so that A, B is the longest side. So if A, B is not the longest side, well, I'll just move A, B, and C until, until A, B is the longest side. So, you know, any one of the three sides could be the longest. I'm just going to make the assumption that A, B is the longest side. And if it's not, well, then I'll move A, a and B around until they are the longest side. All right. So, I mean, that's just the definition of a triangle. It's got three vertices. And one of the sides is going to be the longest. Even if it's an equilateral triangle, right? AB is either as long or longer than the other two sides. All right. That's what. That's the only thing you got to wrap your head around is that I can literally claim, uh, just by naming, I can claim that AB is the longest side. And and remember, if I if I mislabeled A, B, and C, I can move the labels around until AB is the longest side. All right. So this statement right here is pretty sweet. Check it out. I, I got to get these three statements right here, and I've already got two of them right here. All I did was if AB is the longest side, then AB is clearly bigger than one of the sides, AC. And AB is clearly longer than the other side as well, too. So all I'm going to do is add the third side to AB. If AB was already the longest side, adding another side to it will simply make it even bigger than the third side. If AB is already bigger than BC, remember I said AB was the longest side, then adding AC to AB only makes the left side bigger. So I can get these first two statements here simply by saying that AB is the longest and, and using one of the properties of inequalities, which says if you add any positive thing to one side, just one side, well, then that side gets even bigger. Make sense? Or I should say, do you accept that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, for now. Cool. All right. So that's all done. All I got to prove is this last one and I'm done. Well, it turns out that's going to require a little bit of work. All right. So let's see how we can make this. Clearly, I'm going to do a construction. This is the part that always bothers me. Like, who is the person that thought this one up? So I'm going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to construct a, a new segment. I'm going to put Z uh, on AB and I'm going to drop it straight down and be a perpendicular. So that's just a basic construction. Uh, now let's look at side AB. Uh, AB would be AZ plus ZB, yes? Somebody? Yes. Okay. Yes. And that's just a segment addition postulate. Okay. 
So now let's think about the, some of the theorems we use today. Now notice I've made two right triangles, yes? Yes, you have. Yes. Okay. So if well, this angle right here, angle AZC is 90 degrees, where's the longest side of this triangle? If this is 90, where's the longest side of this triangle? Opposite side. Which would be? AC. So therefore, AC must be bigger than AZ, right? If AC is the longest side of this triangle here on the left, it's got to be bigger than AZ. Further, same idea, if this is 90 degrees right here, then CB, or BC, how would I name it? BC has to be the longest side of the smaller triangle, so therefore it's bigger than ZB, okay? And that's using theorem 6-3 uh, that says that the side opposite the biggest angle, it's the biggest side. Oh man, is this slick or what? Um, let's add these two together. Using the property of inequality, let's add these two. What do we get? BC plus AC is greater than ZB plus AZ. Okay. And that's just addition, right? Property of inequality says that you can, if you have two inequalities, you can add them together. Now check it out. The left side already says the left side. The right says AZ plus Z. Oh, wait a minute. That is, what's AZ plus ZB? AB. AB. We're done. Segment addition postulate. So that wasn't too hard. Now, we've probably already forgotten what we were proving. We're proving that for any triangle, take two sides. If you add them together, it's going to be always bigger than the third side. Uh, that is theorem 6-4, our last one. So any two sides of any triangle add together are always bigger than the third side. Always bigger. So now... I proved it to you instead of showing you a little diagram. But the little diagram is actually more informative. It's more intuitive. We just can't accept a, a drawing as a proof like that. Eventually, I forget which chapter, we do drawing proofs. But we're going to put the drawings on the coordinate plane so we get some numbers that can uh, make the proof uh, a rigorous proof. Who's the slowest rider? Me. Anna. Wow, no, Jack. I think I'm slower than Anna is. Yeah, Anna. I don't know, though. It says, wait a minute. I'm Evan the slowest was definitely rider. the slowest rider. Evan, Evan was. was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Evan, was. Evan was slow. Evan took, Evan, uh, what he did was he, like, he made the words look elegant, not sloppy. Yeah, yeah. You guys paid more attention Don't worry, to I did Evan's the exact writing. opposite. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ben, you good? Yeah, sure. All right. So uh, for my regular class, this was like the, the level of it's too much. I've said too much. Hopefully that's not for you. One last thing. So we just said that for any given triangle, that if you add two sides, that will always be bigger than the third side. But we can say, so great, I can say something about two sides that added together. Or I can say that one side is smaller than the other two sides. But I can do a little bit of algebra. I'll just subtract TS from both sides and look what we got now. If I subtract TS from both sides, I get this, right? So what is this saying? It's saying that any side of the triangle is always bigger than what? One side minus the other side. Now, we, yes. got problem, we got a problem with that because we could get a negative number. Yeah, right? it looks like you're getting a negative in that example there. So therefore, we just need to add one thing to this to make it true. We would need to add a one to it. How about we add absolute value symbols? Think about it. I was it. close. If one side was six. But what if you get like negative 65 and then you do the absolute value and then it's uh, true at that point? Agree, but let's That's just think true. about two easy numbers. I don't know, six and eight. What's eight minus six? Is negative two. No. Wait, what's eight, eight minus, oh, six? two, 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 never mind, what, two. What's six minus eight? 
Negative two. So if I add an absolute value, I still get the difference of the two. So I want you to look at the blue statement and the yellow statement. Here's, I'm, I'm gonna read the blue statement backwards. This says that if any side has to be smaller than the two sides added together, and then the yellow statement says that any side has to be bigger than the two sides subtracted from each other, take the absolute value. So that's kind of a neat little thing, and that's what we're gonna do tonight for homework. Okay, I'll say this once again. If we read this from right to left, the blue one, and the yellow one from left to right, we get two good statements. It says that any side is smaller than the two other sides added together, but it's bigger than the two sides subtracted from each other, take the absolute value. So that's kind of what I wanted to leave you with, is the length of any side of a triangle is greater than the absolute value uh, uh, of the difference of the other two sides, and the blue, any side is smaller than the two sides added together. So now we can get a range of possibilities. That's what inequalities is all about. We can get a range of possibilities for side lengths of triangles. So what just happened, we're saying, this is the slide I said we put it all together. I'm saying these four statements right here, that the side opposite the largest angle is always the largest side, the side opposite the largest, I'm sorry, the angle opposite the largest side is the largest angle. And that any side of a triangle is smaller than the other two sides added together. And any side is bigger than the other two sides subtracted from each other. You do have to take the absolute value. The last two statements are easy to confuse. You would think the smaller would be the one that you subtract and the bigger would be the one that you want to add. It's the other way around. The side of a triangle is going to be smaller than the other two added, and the side of a triangle is going to be bigger than the other two subtracted. And I'm going to show you, we've got about uh, 30 seconds left or so. I'm going to show you examples of all of this, what it will look like for homework. You just got to tell me you're ready. I am ready. I'm ready. All right, here we go. So you might get an example of this. It says you got a triangle and it gives you two sides. And it will say, well, the other side must be bigger than this, but smaller than that. So you're going to use these two statements right here. You're going to be bigger than the two numbers subtracted from each other, take the absolute value. So you're, in this particular case, the third side is going to be bigger than Three plus, no, three minus five. Right. Take absolute the absolute value. value of three minus five. Right. Or you could just always say big minus small and never have to worry about the absolute value. So you're going to be bigger in this case than? Uh, two. But you're going to be smaller than? Eight. So when they ask this question, uh, what is the possible side lengths of the third side? You're always going to be bigger than the two subtracted from each other and you're gonna be smaller than the two added together. So in this case, you're gonna be bigger than two, but smaller than eight. Everybody catching on? Yep, just opposites yeah. basically. All right, here's the other way it's gonna look. They're gonna give you a triangle, they're gonna give you side measurements, and they're gonna say which angle is the biggest and the smallest. To find the biggest angle, you find the biggest side, look directly opposite. To find the smallest angle, you look at the uh, whichever side is the smallest, you look opposite. They can mess around with you if they put tick marks, right, for isosceles or something like that. But for the most part, this, this question is pretty straightforward, okay? The other one is with angles. Now, angles, they can get tricky because they can only give you two, and you got to calculate the third. Once again, they're going to ask you what's the longest, not angle, but the longest side and the shortest side. You could also just use logic, like the first one. You don't even have to calculate the last one. You could yeah, just say is, the A B is this, or right. A, uh, A C is the smallest, just because yeah. seventy five plus seventy equals one hundred and forty five. Yeah, if the two added together is gives you a obtuse angle, then you know the other one's got to be acute. Okay, so clearly, then the side that's largest is the side opposite seventy five, and the smallest would be the one uh, uh, opposite the acute angle here. Uh, just be careful; don't rely on the picture necessarily. Uh, but rely on the numbers. If you see a 90 degree angle, it is always the long, the biggest angle. Uh, if you see an obtuse angle immediately, well, I got, I got to do some math here, right? Uh, so just be careful with that. The other thing they can ask you is that they give you three distances 
could those, so could those side lengths make a triangle? So here's what you got to do. You find the biggest number. The biggest number here is 10. Are the other two add together bigger than 10 or smaller than 10? Bigger, 17. So if they are bigger than the third side, it makes a triangle. If they are bigger than the, oh, wait, they're not bigger than the, the large side. 6 plus 6 is 12. So 6, 6, and 20 will not make a triangle. If they're bigger than the, oh, wait, they're not bigger. Right? If they're by point not, one. Right, by point one. Well, right? technically by point two. Right. If they are bigger, well, these are ones that are the same. This is your drawbridge one right here. So even though it looks like this should be able to make a triangle, it doesn't. So no, 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 and then the rest are all yes. Okay? That's what homework will look like, and I went three minutes over time. Questions? How dare you? Nope. 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 All right. Don't forget to take the quiz. Uh, make sure you So much in. to do after this. Make sure you turn in a legible copy so that I can see it. Um, is that from uh, Lord of the Rings, Jack? Yeah, yes. the Lord of the Rings map. Oh, um, nice. It looks really well. Good. <laughs> uh, Got a little bit of glare. Quiz and send me a legible copy so that I can grade it. You guys have a good weekend, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Okay. Yeah, have a good, good okay. weekend. Okay.